right. actual leader. Right. He, but uh, he, he has uh, the power to veto, yes. But I don't know in this case with the redistricting uh, if he actually has that veto power. Mm -hmm. It's more of a, <clears throat> we, we can go into this and uh, with a 13 vote majority. Override the veto. Well, well, we can, we can set up yeah. the districts like that, but I don't foresee that happening because you really need a bipartisan uh, support on this because yes, the Republicans are in power, but yet if we put a plan through that doesn't address civil rights and equality and whatnot, they can file a uh, petition against that and they can actually take it to referendum. And then, of course, the public, public will vote on it. And uh, I don't know if that's ever happened, but you have to go out and get signatures and as many as 3,000 to bring this to a public referendum. But I want to come back to the fact it is our job. It's my job as chairman to work with this uh, both sides of the aisle and come up with a number that's suitable and sufficient that will pass the legislature. Sounds like a plan. Um, yes, it is. Apparently, uh, there is a lot of public uh, uh, push to cut it back. You're yes, right there is. about that. Because I hear it from other people. Yeah. We get a call every, I, I think uh, half our calls have to do with that. Well, and the other thing is I, I want people to remember that uh, uh -huh. we used to be represented by Emil Houghton. This is a much larger picture. Terrific guy, am I right? Terrific guy. Terrific guy. And I, I won't say anything, but now uh, I wish we had the representation of Emil Houghton. But uh, do we fit better with Cattaraugus to Allegheny, uh, Stabenn County, or do we fit better with Erie County? Uh, I'll let those people answer that question. Yeah, I am a, uh, had a lot of experience. He'd been there for a long time. Right. Of course, uh, he owned Corn and Glass. <laughs> yes. That, that helped. Yes. But I, I think, uh, in, in, to bring it back to our county, it's about representation. Uh -huh. uh, I represent agriculture, the fire service, uh, the sheriff department. Uh, I, I feel I try to represent the needs of the rural community, agriculture, and so um, people want to give that some thought is, is maybe we go from 25 to 19 about representation and how strongly you feel about that, about the person you now have. Yeah. I am a, uh, was a regular on our program, and uh, unfortunately our current congressman uh, showed up twice when he was running for election, but never saw him again. <laughs> well, I, I will not criticize any other elected official. I will just maybe praise some more than others. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. Uh, he's pretty scarce on senior report. <laughs> well, it, it's, uh, that's why I brought up the carts, because I think it was important. Uh, I think it's an important program, and it's a mandatory program. Uh -huh. And, and I, I think it's important for senior citizens. Carts was one of the cutbacks that uh, Greg Edwards had uh, indicated he'd have to make if he didn't get his tax hike. He did 9% though. That's a whopping tax hike. Well, hike. I know, but we was in a deficit position. That's why we're concerned about the uh -huh. property tax cap that they're talking about at the state level. Without some mandate relief, I think I want people to understand the county is a carrier of many federal and state programs. Yeah, we, tell me some of the mandates that really fry you. I know, uh, of course, the Medicaid right. is a big one. And uh, they've tried to cap that and they, tried to fund it and have, what's happening with the Medicaid, as you point out, that's well, half our budget. Yes, that's that's very true and uh, there are my, nine mandated programs uh, okay. that, uh, that, that we have to put them in, we have to find the money for them. We do. They're not funded in most cases, especially with Cuomo cutting back on the state budget. Correct. He's taking money away from us, which means Correct. we have to pay for this. Yes. Well, uh, there's nine programs. The first big one is Medicaid. Uh, the second one is pension relief. The third one is family assistance. It's a safety net. That's about a $350 million program. Family assistance. Now, is that, is that social services? Or? Well, that's part of social services. It, uh -huh. it, it kind of fits in with the uh, child welfare. That's a, almost a $300 million pro, uh, program. Mm -hmm. Preschool, uh, special education, early intervention, probation. Uh, and on down the line, indigent defense and uh, youth detention. Those are nine mandates, state mandates that uh, consume 90% of, of our folks and your folks' is tax levy. And, and uh, there's no way you can get rid of these. Uh, they're well, they're mandated, mandated programs. That's why, you know, we're in favor of the tax cap, but yet you're telling me that I can't cut back on some kind of entitlements. If you're asking me to cut back 10%, uh, I, I would say, listen, some of these people that have the entitlements that actually have sometimes better programs than you and I as far as Medicaid and you go into uh, hospitals, uh, I, I hear it constantly, cut back on the welfare programs. So that's where we're looking for some kind of mandate relief at yeah. the state level. Well, of course, we always scapegoat 
the poor and the, the, uh, the helpless and the welfare, um, mainly because uh, they're, they're easy victims. <laughs> they don't vote a lot of them, unfortunately. Well. And so uh, it looks as though, however, um, We've just about cut back as much as we can on the, on the social services. Well, I tell you, it's, it's entitlements. And uh, when, yeah. when I'm in the grocery store and, and someone ahead of me is, uh, is buying things that uh, I feel they shouldn't be and, and I'm paying for them, or if I go to the emergency room and I'm sitting there, we've all been there, done that. Uh, so some of the entitlements, as far as I'm concerned, uh, could, be, could be cut back. Okay. Well, of course, one of the ones that uh, is, is absolutely sickening is the fact that I think New York State's one of only two or three states in the country who saddle the local governments, Correct. the counties, with the money, half of the money in New York State that goes into Medicare, Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And that's the insurer of the last resort. And in Chautauqua County, where there is quite a bit of poverty and there is uh, an awful lot of seniors who require um, Medicare, Medicaid, and Medicare, I might right. add, Medicare Senior Program. Social Security program, but in the meantime, here we are pay, saddled with half of it. Every other state, it's based on, most every other state is based on a general tax collection, and the state pays for their half, the Fed pays for the other half. Right. New York, in their wisdom, said, we're only gonna pay for half our half, that's a quarter of it, and we're gonna straddle Chautauqua County with the other quarter. Correct. So those are the kind of things in your upcoming programs, and after they, they come on, uh, we'll know more, and I'll be happy to come back and go over some of these individuals programs because it's important for the public to understand as we work up to the budget this fall that we really are doing our research, we're trying to do our homework, and this program is one way to get those figures out to the public and let them understand our problems. So it's kind of in black and white, it's no gray area. Okay, well it looks as though, um, of course, uh, Greg had threatened to reduce social <laughs> reduce a lot of things. He was going to do away with the off aging, and I figured they'd have a little trailer down by the down by the river there. <laughs> well, it's, it's just like veteran services. I mean, who doesn't want to maintain veteran services? Mm -hmm. But it costs us less than uh, half a million, or yeah, half a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. I think it is. I don't have those figures with me. Everybody wants to take care of the elderly and the veterans and the youth bureau, but there reaches a point when you're putting so much into Medicaid. Um, extra programs that sometimes we don't feel are necessary that we have to look to cut back. And those local shell dollars, the first two big ones uh, are roads and bridges and sheriff's patrol. And I say that not to, you know, the sheriff was on the radio the other day. He says, well, every time we talk about it, they talk about doing away with the road patrol. Well, uh, that's a big local share dollar. And uh, there's a lot of discussion on that. And then there's a slammer. Which is yeah. uh, we're bleeding at the slammer. Well, it's we, half full of drug people, which well, they they, uh, they they insist on putting away. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, the sheriff, I'm sure, will come on this program sometime and really go over the numbers of who is in the jail. Yeah. And uh, but the point is, it's out there. But people want to see some kind of law enforcement. People want to see their roads plowed, and uh, so that's where a major share of your local share dollars go. So yes, we, we do have to look at those things, and I know what uh, Greg talked about, and he's coming out with a zero-based budget. What's We're that, working. What, what, what's that mean? Zero well, there'll be no, no, there'll be no increases in their budgets, mm -hmm. and that's gonna be tough, because here again, I've talked about the retirements. And uh, inflation. Yeah, and I mean, inflation. you're paying twice, uh, half again as much for a lot of things. Right. And oil, among other things, fuel. Well, you talked, to inflation is still out there, but in, uh, if interest rates start going up, uh, what's gonna happen? Well, inflation and it's going to cost more to live. And, uh, you bet. And that's a very scary situation. Especially for seniors who have no way yes. to recoup the difference. Right. Somebody else might be able to get a second job or work overtime right. or whatever, do some minor thing. An 85-year-old uh, who has arthritis is not going to get a job, has no way to recoup it, dependent entirely on his Social Security and is maybe, if he's lucky, a pension, which is giving us the same right. non-COLA as Social Security. You know, teacher's retirement gave me 1% this year. Makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. uh, have you noticed how everything seems to be jumping about 20, 30 percent in the supermarket? I do the shopping for my family, mm -hmm. and it's just scary. Well, the price of fuel has a lot to do with that. Among other things. Yeah. And the, uh, uh, the price of uh, vegetables and fruits and everything is going up because it costs more for agriculture, for gas, mm -hmm. for the fertilizers, which are based on oil, yep. and many other things. And, of course, the seniors, <laughs> laughingly, the Congress has not been giving them the normal 
uh, COLA anyway. They've been cheating on them with their phony figures. They have right. this core inflation and, well, we'll take this out, we'll take that. Like our current inflation uh, figures does not include energy or, nor food. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's uh, half of our costs. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just laughable how they're tricking the seniors mm -hmm. here. And uh, the seniors are going to wind up eating this stuff right here. You know what that is, Fred? That's, uh, I think, uh, dog food or cat food, Cat right? food. You can't yeah. eat dog food. It has bone in it. You, you have that every, every time I'm here. This is cat food. That's what seniors, you know, during the Depression, they had to eat cat food. Yeah. And they're going to be living in their children's cellar. That's, yeah. that's, uh, that, they're losing their homes right and left. No cola, no inflation, seniors. Laugh. Wrap their sleeves up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fred, uh, Fred Crosscut, leader of the uh, uh, county legislature, and uh, giving us a little insight as to what's happening right now. And it looks like they're, they're moving toward a consolidation of districts and they cut back on the number of, uh, of uh, legislators we have. It looks like we're trying to get our budget together somehow or the other, trying to beat the state mandates, which is uh, becoming impossible now. And worst of all, for two reasons, we're not collecting the sales tax anymore mm -hmm. that we have, were making before. Yeah. The economy's killing us and mm -hmm. there's a lot of poverty, so nobody's buying anything. And secondly, they cut back on the amount of, on the percentage of sales tax. Well, that's true, and we can, that's a whole other story. And next time I come in, I'll have the sales tax figures because like our sales tax uh, has dropped. Yeah. And that's one thing that we're discussing of increasing is going up to an 8% sales tax. Which and might mandate a little bit less uh, property tax, which is uh, people are running out of the county already. <laughs> well, that's right, and you mentioned 9%. I think you'll find that part of that, uh, that 9% was a total tax increase, but it was property and sales tax. Okay, we got a caller. You want to take it on? Oh, sure. Okay, good morning, caller. Thank you for waiting. Good morning. Welcome home, Mr. Powers. It's well, thank nice you. Nice to hear your voice on the uh, scanner. Well, thank for the you. the volunteer fire department. Oh, yes, you heard me uh, last night. Well, we had three calls. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> to all the men watching uh, out for, for uh, watching out for our village, I want to say a big thank you. Well, thank you and very yes, much. They need more volunteers. Yes, we do. We're down to. Oh, I think about 40 uh, or so uh, who are effective at this point. And uh, we had uh, 78 originally. Uh, we're right up to fairly recent times. And it's dwindling because people haven't got the time. They used to be able to work from 9 to 5 and support a family. Forget it now. You need two jobs. That is true. That unfortunately is true. I also would like to, to ask you to mark your calendars. Because on Wednesday, March 23rd, that's the next Wednesday coming up, at the Westfield McDonald's only, there will be an all-you-can-eat pancake dinner for the unbelievable price of $3. This is at McDonald's? Yes. Whoa. At, at 6 o'clock in the evening uh -huh. on March uh, uh, 23rd. That uh, is that is a price. Usually it runs 7 or 8. <laughs> be sure and check that. I was told in the evening, but maybe it's in the morning, but I doubt it would start at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, it they says, open. They do open at six. Yeah, but it says dinner, so I'm assuming that it that it is for the evening. Okay, call, check your local McDonald. <laughs> no, just Westfield. Westfield, the okay. Only one. Uh, who's sponsoring this? It Anybody? will benefit Madame Janex. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm not real good on. I haven't taken French in years and years and years. Uh, French club. They are planning a trip to Quebec this spring. Ah, so to, you know, get into the French culture. Absolutely, which, uh, they speak French up that's there. That's all they speak, apparently, or almost. <laughs> well, all. they are they're bilingual, but they insist that you try to speak French anyway right. because they're very proud of their uh, background. They're always trying to uh, secede from Canada. <laughs> now that's this Wednesday at six p.m. at okay. the Westfield only McDonald's. Uh -huh. Tell your friends what a bargain. Three bucks, all the pancakes you can eat. Yeah. Do they throw in some sausage? It, I don't know. It, it just, I was just told that it was going to be a, a pancake dinner for $3, and I, I just thought. Well, this, yeah. is, this is what you need with them. You know what this is? No. Maple syrup. What is it? It's maple <laughs> maple syrup. That comes from the maple tree. And, oh, and, oh, and yeah. we're going to talk yeah. about that. Uh, yeah, for, and this was incidentally made by Fred Crosscut. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I also do have a question for Mr. Kraska. Sure. Um, I happen to know of a local business that closed a couple of years ago, and uh, they, they were in the, pro before they closed this place for the previous year, they had been in the process of building another plant at a, at a, a different location out of this county, out of the state, as a matter of fact. 
in the months preceding them shutting down this shop, a whole bunch of new equipment came in, like uh, those things, those jitneys and things like that, came into this shop. The shop.